Hello there, I'm not a native speaker, I'm just learning and apologize in advance for the incorrect pronunciation. I will be glad to hear your comments on what words I should learn to pronounce correctly. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old, life on it is about 4 billion years old, but how long do we have left? The answer to this question surprised me very much, so I decided to dig around and what will happen to life and the planet in the future? Will the Earth freeze completely or turn into endless paths? Why will there be 25 hours in a day? What is the Green Sahara? What is Pangea Proxima and other interesting things? I'm sure you will like it. Let's go! Ok, let's begin. In how long will something really important happen to our planet? In 100? Maybe in 500? Maybe 1000? In fact, a planetary scale thing will happen in 11 or 15,000 years, which actually were little, Homo sapiens appeared about 300,000 years ago. And there will be a very interesting change of seasons. Look. Our planet doesn't rotate in a perfect circle around the sun, sometimes closer to the sun and sometimes further away. I'm sure you're educated people, so most likely you know this, but I will remind you. The Earth's approach to the sun doesn't affect the seasons. The rotation of the planet around the axis is affected. The planet is not located exactly 90 degrees to our orbit, but it's slightly tilted. Therefore, when the Earth rotates around the Sun, first the northern part of the planet uh, basks longer in the Sun, and then the southern part of the planet, the part that is longer under the Sun, warms up and it turns out summer, the days are longer, etc. The other half of the planet, on the contrary, the days are shorter, there is less heat, winters begins. A very familiar phenomenon. That's just the point in that. This tilt of the planet uh, also rotates. You know, when the spinning top starts to stop, the axis of its rotation begins to fall, but it still rotates in a circle. I think uh, looking at the video, everything becomes uh, pretty clear. It's the same with uh, our planet, just a million times slower. The other half of the planet, on the contrary, the days are shorter, there is less heat, winter begins. This is called actual precession. The direction of our axis is rotating one revolution in about uh, 26,000 years. What it gives us? Three big and significant things. The first is purely formal, but nevertheless, winter and summer replace each other in places. That is, if you do nothing with the calendar, then June, July, August you have snow, and in December, January, February you harvest. But it's just a fun formality. There are also practical points. I started with a common misconception that summer is when the Earth flies closer to the Sun in its elliptical orbit. Actually, it still has its effect. Therefore, it turns out like this. When the Earth is closest to the Sun, it happens in our northern part of the planet in winter, where the majority of the world's population lives. And accordingly, when it's summer, we are away from the Sun. And this will change in about 13,000 years to the opposite situation. Are people complaining about the heat in summer right now? Let's see what they say then. Well, the winters will accordingly become harsher. In general, it will not cause an apocalypse. Again, going back to the beginning of the video, Homo sapiens are already 300,000 years old, on average. Our species has experienced this more than once. But people will definitely have complaints, especially if global warming is not solved by that time. Well. Even though there will be no apocalypse, this causes a third change. Green Sahara. You've probably heard a lot about it. The largest desert occupies 30% of Africa. It is approximately equal in area to the United States. And it's a huge area of dead sand. At the same time, it is from Africa that Homo as a species settles into Eurasia. 
Homo erectus, for example. And then the most powerful and ancient Egyptian civilization appears in Africa. Should I go across the 40 degree sandy ocean purely for fun? It's only 4000 kilometers to go in a straight line. If you walk 50 kilometers, you, you can walk in just 80 days without food and water. This is where we will build our state. We will sell sand, eat uh, sand cakes, and hope that watering the sand with water from the Nile something will grow. Of course not. The thing is that there wasn't always a desert there. There are many rock carvings found in the Sahara, which uh, depict large savanna animals, vegetation and floating people, because there were many lakes and rivers. It's the same with the Egyptians. We look at their culture and history like everything else in the world, very stereotypically and averagely. In movies and games you will definitely see that Egypt is sand with a couple of bushes. But if you take early Egypt, forest grew in those days. This period was called the humid period of Green Sahara, which repeats uh, every few thousand years, and largely due to the precession of the Earth. Approximately 13-14 thousand years ago, this Green period began and ended 4-6 thousand years ago. Then there was more sunlight in this uh, hemisphere, because of which the winds uh, shifted, different climatic uh, conditions developed and uh, the Sahara was flooded with water. You probably know the Giga Chad meme, and there is a real lake in Africa, Chad. Here it is highlighted in green. But in those days Chad was a little bigger. Here he is blue. That's why his condition is called Mega Chat. So the ancient Egyptians were surrounded by vegetation. The desert returned just 4-6 thousand years ago, when the first stepped Egyptian pyramids are about 4.5 thousand years old. This is my fantasy, but in theory there could at least be greenery around them, and somewhere there might be forests, and apparently it will return in 13-14 thousand years, when the precession of the Earth, uh, the circle of the axis of the planet will be completed. Here I want to clarify. I try to take events in which we are almost certain and which we are unlikely to be able to influence. Because these are events of a planetary scale. And for example, scientists are sure that an asteroid will fly to Earth at some point. Danger can overtake us at any moment. But asteroids are a matter of um, probabilities, not dates. Plus, we can influence it. There is a very recent news. NASA changed the asteroid's course. In 2021, uh, the spacecraft was launched uh, specifically for this and uh, crashed into an asteroid. So the trajectory changed. The data obtained will help save the Earth in the future. But there are events that are millions of times more difficult to change. For example, the explosion of volcano, or rather, a super volcano. In general, volcanoes are very interesting and complex topic. They come in different types, erupt in different ways, and even the mechanism of their work and formation is different. Although magma flows out of the core and that's it. As always, it's not that simple. But let's say the essence is something like this, yes. The idea is that more often this activity occurs at the junction of the plates, where it is uh, relatively easy to get out. But it also happens that uh, magma needs to break through somewhere in the middle of the lithospheric plate. But magma cannot leak there, and the pressure will build up until it uh, literally blows the way out. Although the reason may be different, the question is still being in investigated, because there has not been such an um, eruption in human civilization. However, we know that there were super eruptions, and recently they have occurred uh, about uh, once every 50,000 years. And it wasn't good. You might think like, uh, come on, this happened uh, for all 4 billion years, thousands of times, so what's the big deal? 
Actually, even ancient people were not uh, catastrophically affected by such things. The number of people did not decrease. But, you know, a drop in temperature by 3-4 degrees, crop failure, mass famine and acid rain in places with clouds of ash on half of the planet in a few years I would like to avoid uh, all this. And you never know. We still don't know what caused the mass extinctions of the planet. There were five of them, during which about 70-90% of all animal species died. And many scientists consider almost the main reason huge volcanic eruptions and not meteorite impacts. So yes, about once every 50,000 years a super volcano make an explosion. It usually didn't destroy almost all life on Earth, but that's not for sure. And at least it's still very unpleasant. And how to avoid this is critically unclear. About 26 thousand years have uh, passed since uh, the last time, so in theory we expect the next one in about the same amount. Accurate estimates are of course impossible, so the error is um, 10,000 years, but nevertheless. In general, it is unlikely that anything else will happen to the planet. Therefore, the events that I listed will be repeated once again, until the next important event in about 50,000 years. There is a high probability that a new Ice Age will come. Let me explain. You know about the Ice Age. Well, at least thanks to the cartoon of the same name and the understanding that mammoths uh, didn't just wear wool. This, accordingly, was at the dawn of mankind, even before civilizations. That's all the usual knowledge. But everything is actually much more interesting. The fact is that on our planet, basically, there should be no ice. Neither in the Arctic nor in Antarctica. We are so used to them because still we live in the Ice Age. It is simply divided into glaciation and interglaciation, which is where we are right now. Take a look for clarity. There is the chronology of our planet. And these little blue periods, these are the Ice Age. The rest of the time – no ice. The reasons for the decrease in temperature could be different. Uh, the very first one, for example, most likely happened after an oxygen catastrophe. 4 billion years ago the Sun probably shone much weaker. So much weaker that the planet should have been completely frozen. But we know for sure that there was no ice then. The water was in liquid form and life appeared. It's called the faint young sun paradox. This is how it explained. At that time there was no photosynthesis, so there were a lot of greenhouse gases, methane for example, which trapped heat on the planet. However, then the ice age uh, still happens, when the sun on the contrary shone only brighter. And the fact is that in the course of evolution photosynthesis uh, appears quickly in which oxygen is a byproduct. And so, this mass of oxygen displaced uh, methane, which uh, immediately turned cold, and quite harshly. It is not known how much, but the polar caps could occupy a significant part of the planet, if not the entire planet at all. Although this is unlikely. But the next glaciation is considered by many scientists to the strongest and hypothetically encasing the Earth in ice completely, forming the so-called snowball Earth. There were already other reasons, just like the next couple, until 2.5 million years ago our modern glaciation or the modern ice age began. It is still going on, because since then Antarctica has been constantly under ice. The reason for the modern ice age it is impossible to know for sure. Everything works in a complex here. Changes in rotation of the Earth, changes in the composition of the air, shifts of of, uh, continents, changes in currents in the oceans, and even the rise of mountains. And our period has an interesting feature. This is a stable alternation of cooling and warming. The last glaciation began a little more than 110,000 years ago. During this period the last glacial maximum occurred 20-25,000 years ago. 
Northern Europe is about as far as Germany under the ice. The whole of Canada is under ice. Some hills, such as from Tibet to Beijing, could be under ice, although maybe not permanently. And probably this awaits us in the future. In about 50,000 years a new glaciation will begin. Although, of course, you have heard about uh, global warming, which was uh, brought by man. And if we don't influence this in any way, then perhaps a new glaciation will be not in 15, but uh, 100,000 years. But most likely it will happen anyway. Around this time, after 50,000 years, the day will begin to last a little longer. Not uh, 24 hours, but 24 hours and 1 second. And a second is really super important. And it actually works quite interestingly. We are slowing down because of the tides. I don't know how well you know this fact, uh, right if you knew about it. But what are the tides? It's not really raising and lowering the water level. In fact, the water level is uh, kept at the same level. More precisely, it is really the attraction of water to the Moon, a giant wave the size of a planet. The Moon is spinning, and this wave is spinning around the planet. However, the Moon has been spinning around us for almost a month, and the Earth makes a revolution around itself in 24 hours. As a result, it turns out that this wave is practically standing still, and inside this wave the Earth is forced to rotate. There are many interesting effects there. For example, the Moon gets further over time. But we are interested in the friction force. The constant collision of a standing wave of water and Earth slows down our rotation and increases the duration of the day by one second every 50,000 years. It may seem that this is insignificant, but initially during the formation of the Earth, the day lasted generally a little, something about 6 hours. At the moment between the first and second ice age which we discussed, 1.5 billion years ago the day lasted 16-18 hours. When the first complex multicellular appeared during the Cambrian explosion 500 million years ago, the day lasted uh, 20 hours and 40 minutes. Therefore, for longer time periods, we will return to the Moon. Then begins a long game and a question of perspective. After all, everything is relative. Everything that we have just listed was measured in tens of thousands of years. A huge amount of time for civilization, but tiny for any species of organisms. Let me remind you again. Homo sapiens is about 300,000 years old, and our branch, Homo, its people in fact just slightly different. Its first representative, Homo habilis, is about 2 million years old. So the things I have listed will be repeated more than once. More serious changes will begin to occur at a distance not in tens or thousands of years, but in millions. Let's remember about the Moon. After 3 million years, it will move away even more and the day on Earth will be longer by one minute. And by the way, it turns out that if a person lives now, well, let's say 80 years, then with an increase in the day by one minute, in total he will have time to live about 20 days less. Then the continents change. I have already started talking about this topic. The movement of uh, continents affects the weather and may even be a big part of the next ice age. That's why it's important. And in general, I wonder how the globe will change in 10 million years, for example. Actually, still a little bit. However, the changes will already be noticeable. For example, Africa actually consists of two plates, Nubian and Somali, and they are moving away from each other. Already there, the thickness of the Earth's crust is two times less than it was before, and some places are below the sea level, like the Dalal volcano. It is located 50-100 meters below the sea level. So just let the Red Sea go in there, it will flood everything. Actually, most likely in 10 million years it will be. The plates will fall apart so much that no hills will be able to hold water and Africa will split in two. 
Actually, the beginning of this process is perfectly visible on the maps if you look closely. A similar story is likely to happen with Nepal. The Indian plate will move 180 kilometers to Tibet. And between India and Tibet is Nepal, just about 180 kilometers wide. So figuratively speaking, the Earth will just eat this country in 10 million years. Similar changes will continue in 50 million years, affecting America. In general, this country is located on the North American plate, but one part of it is located on the Pacific plate. This is California. And they are moving towards each other. As a result, California can, figuratively speaking, dock with the San Francisco. Or, on the contrary, slightly move away from it and the bay will turn into a full-fledged sea. There was even a movie about it with the rock. The plates started moving too fast there, as a consequence, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. Of course, we don't know exactly how and where the continents will dock. It all depends on how the magmatic flows will flow, roughly speaking, and where the plates will be carried. Although there are actually few options, only 2-3, and all of them, one way or another, lead to a supercontinent. That is uh, quite familiar to you. You know about the last one, Pangaea, thanks to the dinosaurs. The time when all the continents were molded into one. But scientists are sure that this uh, disconnection to the continents and back has happened more than once. Before Pangaea there was uh, Gondwana, before it Panotia, Rodinia, Colombia, etc. So apparently in the future, after 50 million years, Africa will join Eurasia and will no longer be a separate continent. And in 60 million years, Australia will also stick to them. After 130-150 million years, Antarctica will approach and attach from the south. America needs to swim the longest. So while it is floating, after 180 million years, you can make a note that the day now lasts one hour longer. 25 hours. And finally, in 250-300 million years, America will join the rest of the continents, form a new supercontinent. It is often called Pangaea Proxima. There are alternative options, uh, for example, Amasia. The difference in them is where exactly all this will merge together. Closer to the equator or the pole of the planet. If all of humanity suddenly teleports there, time would be certainly be amazing. Everyone lives nearby. Everything can be reached. Yes, uh, for a very long time, but there is no need to swim across the oceans anymore. How would this affect the history of mankind if it um, were originally so? Very interesting. Write your fantasies on this topic. I wonder how the weather would have changed. It's already very speculative. Someone anticipates a drought in the center of such a supercontinent. Someone is talking about uh, global cooling due to the fact that it is more difficult to heat the territories with warm currents and the reflectivity of the planet is increased, etc. But in general, scientists do not predict anything critical because of this formation. The new Pangaea will live for a quite a long time, but it will also fall apart in 400-500 uh, million years. And further, I would like to say that everything continues in a circle, but not really. You know for sure that our sun will turn into a red giant and swallow the earth. Only it will happen in billion of years, more precisely in about uh, 7.5 billion years. But shit will start happening in just a half a billion years, right after the collapse of New Pangaea. Remember I said that the sun used to shine much weaker. It's still getting hotter in the sun. And in 500 million years the planet will get hotter. Not critical, but a certain threshold will be reached, which will affect the composition of the air. Here is the thing. There are many different cycles in our nature. The most famous, of course, is the water cycle. But there are a couple of equally important ones. Nitrogen cycle and carbon cycle. Actually, what our life consists of. So, as you remember, I was talking about the oxygen catastrophe when photosynthesis appeared. We are used to breathing oxygen. 
but in fact it is a byproduct of plant life. For them, carbon dioxide is primarily important, CO2, which is part of the carbon cycle. If simplified, the bottom line is that it gradually leaves the atmosphere, connecting with the Earth. This chemical compound descends to the Earth core and melts there, and then it breaks out during volcanism. But at some point in about 500-600 million years, due to the rise of the sun's luminosity and temperature, the rate of chemical reactions will increase. Carbon dioxide will bind to the Earth faster and leave the atmosphere, and inside the planet will only become less active. But it doesn't even matter. The bottom line is that carbon dioxide will simply not have time to be released in the opposite direction. There is no carbon dioxide in the air, there are no plants. So, in half a billion years, our planet is becoming not so green. Life will surely adjust for a while, the oxygen will remain, but we will be left without 90% of plants. I think you understand what a blow to life on Earth. What will herbivores eat? All large animals will die out, if not all vertebrates. In fact, this is already the beginning of the death of all life on Earth. The planet will turn into a desert with rare greenery and some very simple life, like worms and insects. In another 200 million years, in further 800 million years from us, carbon dioxide will be too little for any plants. This means that there will be much less oxygen. There is nothing to maintain the ozone layer, and without the ozone layer, the remnants of life will burn under the already increasing ultraviolet radiation. For some time, microbes will remain in caves and near geothermal springs, but no more than that. In about a billion years, on a planet without carbon dioxide and oxygen, the temperature will rise even more due to the increase in the luminosity of the sun, and average temperature is 47 degrees Celsius. The oceans begin to evaporate uncontrollably, tectonic plates stop if they haven't stopped before, the atmosphere becomes very humid, but due to solar radiation, water vapor breaks down into oxygen and hydrogen, and hydrogen as the lightest element is gradually carried away into space. Well, then everything is very slow and nothing special. In about 2 billion years, the oceans may completely evaporate if the atmospheric pressure drops enough. But this is not accurate. After 2.8 billion years, the temperature is already about 150 degrees, even at the poles. The Earth's magnetic field works by mixing the Earth's core, due to the fact that the core is liquid. But after 3-4 billion years, it is very likely that it will completely solidify, and the magnetic field will turn off. At about this time, after 4 billion years, water will definitely not be able to remain in a liquid state. Due to the huge steam, the greenhouse's effect uh, can work to the full, inflaming our atmosphere by more than a thousand degrees Celsius. And a huge amount of time will happen nothing until the sun reaches its gigantic size, and in 7.5 billion years it will swallow up the Earth. You know, in childhood, uh, before going to bed, different thoughts scared me. I tried to imagine where the cosmos ends, if it is uh, infinity. I couldn't do it and uh, I was getting scared. It was the same with the understanding that the sun would uh, swallow up the earth in uh, the future. But I am calmed down from the thought, it's okay, it will happen in 7 billion years. The earth uh, has not even existed so long. But really, what's the difference? If life on earth becomes impossible in uh, 500 million years? This is uh, not such good news. However, it amazes me how everything is relative here. On the one hand, life on Earth is 4 billion years old, and it 
turns out that if there are uh, only 500 million years left, we are living in some very elderly stage of uh, life. On the one hand, yes, purely historically it turns out like this. But on the other hand, the moment of the appearance of complex life, large organisms such as uh, trilobites and normal animals, such a more familiar life appeared during the Cambrian explosion 500 million years ago. If you look at it uh, this way, then we can say that we are somewhere in the middle of the life of life. All this uh, fascinates me, probably because of the magnitude of these thoughts. I hope you will also have something to think about uh, before going to bed. If so, be sure to like and write a comment what you think about all this. Be sure to write that a human will destroy the planet faster or uh, conservatively uh, save it. It will be a huge support for me if you share this video with someone who may also be interested in all this information. Also, if you click on the bell. Bye.